These croissants have been sitting out for a little over a month at room temperature, turning into a fertile landscape for what appears to be a zygomycete mold species. Zygomycetes produce sporangia, which are these spherical structures supported by sporangiophores, the stalk-looking structures. Sporangia are part of their reproductive cycle, each one filled with spores ready for dispersal. Think of sporangia as tiny balloons sitting on top of slender sticks where each balloon is packed with spores ready to pop and spread out like dandelion seeds in the wind. They mainly reproduce asexually by releasing these spores, allowing them to multiply without needing another individual. However, zygomycetes can also resort to sexual reproduction, forming zygospores during tough times or when conditions aren't ideal. These zygospores act like protective armor, tougher against harsher environments, though this method isn't their go-to strategy for multiplying. The most common kinds of zygomycota molds that grow on bread are mucor, rhizopus, and absidia, which all produce and release spores through their sporangia. You may have noticed that there are various different colored and sized sporangia, which could either indicate different species or the same species just in a different stage of its life. Young sporangia are typically smaller and almost translucent or colorless due to the low concentration of spores, while the mature ones are larger and typically dark in color, indicating they are almost ready to release their spores. The final color of adult sporangia can range from gray, black, brown, and other shades depending on the species, environmental conditions, and the specific pigments produced. Identifying the exact genus and species of mold can be really tricky to say the least without special tools. Just by looking, you can't tell for sure which mold it is because many different kinds can appear similar in shape, size, and color. To know for certain, you need to do things like use special stains to see details under a microscope or send a sample to a lab for DNA testing, which can get expensive. That being known, I grabbed some with my tweezers so we can observe some samples at an even higher magnification under a microscope. Most of the sporangia burst open and began releasing spores all around the slide, which are the spherical and ovoid-shaped objects on the screen. Depending on the species, each sporangium at maturity could potentially contain thousands, if not tens of thousands of spores that are all ready to reproduce when the conditions are just right. Here are some clips of the stalks or sporangiophores up close, and you can see tons of spores wrapped around or stuck to the sides of them. While these spores are microscopic and primarily designed for reproduction, they can still pose a risk if inhaled or if they enter through an open wound. Certain species like Rhizopus or Mucor are known to cause mucormycosis, a fungal infection where spores can invade tissues where they then germinate and develop into hyphae. These are the thread-like structures that make up the body of the mold, functioning like roots or branches, allowing the fungus to grow and absorb nutrients. These filamentous fungal threads can invade tissues, especially our blood vessels, resulting in conditions such as necrosis, thrombosis, and infarction, which are primarily responsible for the damage seen in mucormycosis. I've chosen not to display the images of infection due to their graphic nature, and viewer discretion is advised if you choose to look further on your own. I can, however, show you what they look like on a microscopic level, and these are some images I found online of tissue samples that are infected with mucormycosis. These samples under a microscope show us the hyphae of the fungus inside various tissues. There are the red branching structures extending throughout the sample. The colors you see come from staining methods that highlight the fungal elements and other biological cells more clearly. It's worth noting that for the majority of people, the risk of getting sick from these common bread molds is very low. Your body is actually equipped to handle exposures daily without any adverse effects given the concentration isn't extreme. In fact, we breathe in mold spores almost on a daily basis without even realizing it. For those with a compromised immune system, it might be better to take extra precautions, but even then, the infection rate is still pretty low. That being said, I am still wearing some PPE like a respirator, gloves, eye protection, and a long sleeve shirt to safely admire these organisms. If there's any other mold experiments you'd like to see, just let me know down in the comments below. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.